Hello, Facebook Livers. Hello, my Periscope Hi. family and friends. Thank you for joining those who are watching live and those who will catch replay. Hello, Pastor Vashon. Hello, um, Stephanie3341. Hello, uh, A Dollface. I like your handle. Hello, Twikey. I'm going to be calling you here in a, in a little bit. Um, hi, Sammer4455. How is everybody? Hi, Kiki. Thank you all for joining my scope. Um, please do. Uh, I typically do not ask you to invite your followers. I just let you do that naturally. But I do think this is going to be something that's going to be beneficial to everybody who's watching. I'm doing a simultaneous. Hello, how are you? I'm doing a, hope you're doing well in Houston. Hope everything is um, well where you are. Um, like I said, I typically don't ask for you to invite your followers. Hello, Patrice, how are you? Uh, but this is going to be something I know that's going to. Uh, hello, Rod. Be beneficial. So if you're on my Periscope, I'm on Periscope and Facebook Live. If you're on Periscope, please don't invite your followers. Um, text come out. So I want to first of all, I want to first of all, I don't know where I want. I have so much I want to share. I don't know where to start. Okay, I want to first of all, you're very welcome, sir. I want to first of all talk to you guys. Okay, so many of you know, and do stay on with me because I promise you it's gonna be good. Many of you know I was in uh, my second book. I was in a book. Uh, it's an anthology. Oh, you did? Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad I was well. Uh, that I was in with myself. And I want to say there was 29 of us, myself, and 28, 27 other women. It's called The Fabulous New Life. And in this particular book, I talk about my beginning years in ministry. And so I share my favorite of all time. I'm going to take my jacket off. My favorite of all time quotes by Marianne Williamson. And um, so you saw the, a little bit of the title of that handle. Um, our deepest fear is not that we are adequate. Our deepest fear is not that we are adequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So what, what I love about that particular uh, poem uh, is, is, is a lot of times um, on this journey called life, and we're all living this journey at whatever, whatever pace you're at, you know, wherever season you are, we're all doing this thing together called life. And in life, we come against many different, um, obstacles. We come against many different, um, trials. We, we begin to understand ourselves, learn ourselves, get to know ourselves in new and exciting ways. We get to know, you know, who we are, what we can handle. We get to understand, um, the tenacity that we have, the, the energy, the vigorance, the call that's on our lives, right? And so this is what I want to encourage you. First, I'm going to share this business tip with you. Um, I want to say this to you. If God has given you anything to do, if you feel there's anything on the inside of you burning to do something great, I want to first of all remind you, hello Rod, of the responsibility of that call, I want you to be mindful of the fact that if God has given you anything to do, if he's spoken anything into your spirit, if you just have a knowing in your heart that there's something you're supposed to be doing, hello, Jalicia, I want to remind you of the seriousness and the responsibility to that call, right? I was talking to, thank you for inviting your followers. I was talking to one of my friends saying we were talking about marketing and please don't leave because I promise there's going to be some good stuff in this. We were talking about marketing and one of the hardest things when you're doing events is marketing. It is one of the most frustrating, hardest, annoying things that you will possibly ever do as it pertains to, um, I got some things on my neck today. I don't want to, I'm sorry, the scarf one. It's kind of hot, but I don't want to be on camera showing you, you guys all freak out like, what's on my neck? So I don't want to show that to you. So I have this on. That's why it kind of keeps moving and it looks weird, but, <laughs> but anyways, um, and so one of the hardest things to do is marketing. When you have an event, whether you're writing a book, whatever you're doing, but this is what I want to explain to you. A lot of times in our own false humility, right? We say, well, I don't want, people say, well, why do you share? People don't really say this, but people probably think this, I'll say this. And I've heard other people say, people have asked them this. People will say things like, why do you share so much about what you're doing? Well, are you bragging about yourself? Are you, you know, um, why do you talk so much about what you're doing? Why, when you're doing something, why do you market it so heavily? Here's what I want you to understand. When it comes to what you're called to do, when God gives you something to do, it is your responsibility to carry out that mission and make sure that you do everything in your power. Um, you, of course, you have your faith, right? But then you use every avenue possible, right? Whether it's 
Facebook Live, whether it's Periscope, whatever, you use everything possible to make sure that you are doing what you're called to do to, to bring about the people necessary to be in the room, to be in the space, to be wherever he's telling you to do. You do everything in your power and possible to make sure that what God charged you with, yes, branding marketing is crucial, yes, yes, um, that everything that God has charged you with, I want you to understand if God has given you something, it is a charge. It's not just something you get to just say, okay, well, you know, when I feel like it, God has given you a charge. He's given you a responsibility. And so it is your duty to once God tells you, okay, I want you to go do X, Y, Z. I want you to go do this program. I want you to go start this business. I want you to go whatever he's charging you to do. It is then your responsibility to put feet to your faith. And bring about what he's telling you to do. Now, I want to say this right here. Wow, praise God, sir. I want to say this right here. One of the hardest things to do is telling people what you're doing. When I'm marketing, I don't like it. I hate, let me say this one more time. I hate marketing. I hate telling people, hey, you're invited to this. Hey, I'm doing this. Hey, I'm doing that. But I understand that God has given me a charge. And with that charge, he's, he's given me, he said, there's people that I'm supposed to have in that room. There, there are people that if I don't speak, if I'm not obedient, if I don't do what's necessary to bring them in the room, then the deposit that's supposed to be made will not take place. So it's no longer about me and my humility, right? We have this false humility. Well, I don't want to talk about what I'm doing. Well, I just, you know, I just feel like I'm bragging. How will anybody know you're doing anything if you're not telling them about it? How are you being responsible and a good stewardship of what God has given you if you won't even take the steps to create a campaign that markets what you're doing so you can invite people into the room? I want you to understand if you are still afraid to talk about what God has told you to do, Check your motive because a lot of times it has nothing to do with anything but some false humility and being afraid to fail publicly. I'm going to be real. Well, I don't know if I'm going to go there real honest. I may not do that just yet. I ain't going to do that. Yet. <laughs> but, you know, but but I, I want you to under <laughs> I want you to understand. I want you to understand the bigness of what God has given all of us. I want you to understand the bigness of what God has given all of us. God has given all of us something huge, so big that we cannot do it in our own strength. But he does require us to put action with our faith. He does require us that when he gives us a charge, that we use every avenue possible to make sure that what God told you to do, you open it up in such a way that the people that are called to whatever you're doing have the space and the ability to be a part of what God has told you to do. And it's false humility if you say things like, well, I don't want to seem like I'm bragging on myself. Or I don't want to talk about this. or I don't want to invite people to that. It's false humility. And it's more about you than it is about the people that you're called to serve. When you're called to serve people, you can hate doing the whole process of marketing or talking about it, but you're called to serve. And nobody will know you are available Nobody will know I'm a speaker if I don't put events that I'm attending. If I don't put events that I've spoken at, if I don't put pictures of my events, if I don't put flyers up, if I don't invite people to what I'm doing, nobody's going to know that's what I'm called to do. Nobody will know. And I'm being selfish by holding back what God has given me to give because I'm afraid of failing in public. I'm afraid of looking like I'm bragging. I'm afraid of talking about myself too much. I'm, I'm afraid. And in essence, all of that is about me and it's not about the people that God has called me to serve. We're all called to serve somebody in some way. I love this scripture that talks about being earthen vessels because that's truly what we are. In 2 uh, Second Corinthians 4 and 7, it talks about being earthen vessels. We are literally vessels in the earth. And when you have a vessel, when you think about a vessel, it's, it holds something, it carries something, right? And so we are called to be vessels, carriers of light, carriers of information, carriers of love, carriers of healing, whatever God has called us to carry, carriers of business ideas, carriers of successful inventions. We're called to be carriers, 
We're earthen vessels. We're givers. We're supposed to be depositing something. If there is no one after you that you're depositing something in, then your life has been what? I'm just going to tell y'all the truth. Don't be mad at me. I'm just the messenger today. Okay? Thank you for joining, Stephanie. If there is nobody after you that you're depositing something in, you're wasting your time. You're wasting away. The other day, my daughter made a video talking about dreams, right? She's only four. But my daughter's watched me in such a way that my life is literally spilling into hers. I'm an accident that spilled over in her life, if that makes sense. I don't do it on purpose. But I'm a vessel, Right. And there are people I can tell you, people who message me, who call me, who Facebook me. And they're like, oh, my God, you're touching me. This blesses me because I'm pouring because that's what I'm called to do. I'm a vessel. I can't hold everything in that God has given me. Hi, thank you for joining G-Dub. That's selfish. And a lot of what we do is more about self-preservation than it is about making sure that we're touching a nation. That we're touching a people, that we're leaving something after we leave that far surpasses the fact that Anisha was ever present on earth. There should be something that I leave. There should be something that you leave after you're gone. This flesh is gone. There should be something that's left that show that you once lived in this planet called earth. Right? So I'm going to read you the scripture really quick. Uh, my laptop don't die. Oh, I only got 7% life left. Hold on. Let me. Um, thank y'all for staying on and for the amen hearts. I have 7% left, so I'm going to try to get the scripture into you really, really quick. Okay, so it says, I'm going to hold this here, and I'm going to hold this over here. It says, this is a New Living Translation. This is 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. And it says, we know, oh, here we go, New Living Translation. Yes, please do watch it again, Miss Kiki. Thank you for joining <laughs> I understand, girl, babies. I totally understand. We we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing the great treasure, which is another translation's earthen vessels, right? It says, um, we now have the we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. That, that ma This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. So I want you to understand when I, what I mean by this. Hi, Kimberly. I want you to understand what I, what I mean by this. Some translations say we're earthen vessels, but we have a great light. God has given us a light. God has given us a, 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 a voice. God has given us a mission. And I want us to begin to get out of false humility. And I want us to begin to stop making it about us. Because when God made you, hello, thank you for joining Pastor Ron. He, he didn't just, God is a legacy um, minded God. And that's why when you read scriptures, it tells you such and such begot such and such and such and such came from such. Because God is always mindful of legacy. So when he left you, when he put you here, when he deposited you as a seed, right? He deposited you on earth as a seed. And what does a seed do? A seed multiplies after itself, right? So I'm going to ask you this. As a seed in the earth... What are you multiplying? What are you depositing? What is your vessel carrying? Can people drink from you and receive healing, wholeness, life? Or are they getting something bitter and nasty to taste? Something that they're wanting to spit out? Living life to the fullest is not about us as much as it is about what we're called to do. It's not about us as much as it's called, as it is about the purpose and the legacy and the thing that God has told us to do and leave as a residue of our presence in the earth. So it's no longer about me. When I show up on Periscope, on Facebook Live, whether I have two people, 10 people, 50 people, whatever, 100 people, I've had as many as 400 people on Periscope before. I'm not concerned about the numbers. I'm concerned about the fact that I'm being obedient. Hi, Kimberly. That I'm simply being obedient 
to my life's mission. And everything that happens as a result is just, you know, sugar on top, you know, ice cream, the cherry on top or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? But I want you to be so clear and I want you to understand and just and hear me when I say life is bigger than you. It's bigger than your kids. It's bigger than paying your bills. It's bigger than a mortgage payment. Life is is is, is bigger. Praise God. I try. I try. Right. I think if you're talking to me, I don't know. Maybe you're not. I don't know. But do you know what I'm saying? And when you begin to get behind the understanding of the bigness, that's when everything that you've been hoping for your life, everything that you've been desiring for your life, everything you've been reaching for, everything you've been dreaming for, when you get behind the bigness of what God is telling you, when you get into in obedience and you stop thinking about yourself and you stop worrying about failing and looking bad and making mistakes, because that's all a part of the process. We make mistakes. We don't do it right always the first time or second time or fifth time. Maybe I don't know. Do you know, but it's all a learning process, right? But when you stop looking at yourself and you stop worrying about your self-preservation and what people are going to think and what people are saying, because people are going to talk anyway, right? What people think, what people say, am I going to fail? How is this going to look in public? I don't want to mark it. I don't want to brag about my, when you stop making it about I and you say, but father, you made me a vessel and you want me to pour and you, and you created me to give and you made me to be a seed into the earth so that I can deposit and grow and create more after myself. We're really more after himself, but he's in us. So, you know, but when you, when you look at life from that perspective, there's nothing God won't hold back from somebody who says, God, pour me, pour in me so I can pour into them more of you or more of whatever you're giving me to deposit because we're earthen vessels, right? One of the biggest things I find that helps us to be able to get off of our own thinking and our own selves is to find a meaning of your, find the meaning of your life. Find something in life that makes it meaningful beyond you. Find a cause, find a mission, find something that makes life meaningful beyond yourself. And here's how we know that we're called to give and we're called to love and we're called to do good deeds. I'll take a drink of my <laughs> We know that we're created to do that. Because when we do it, it feels good. Have you ever had a bad day? And you're like, you know what? I'm just going to stop thinking about what I'm going through. I'm going to be there for somebody else who's going through the same thing. Or I'm going to go find somebody I can pour into. I'm going to go find somebody I can speak a positive word into. I'm going to go find somebody to love. I'm going to find somebody to hug. I'm going to find somebody. And do you realize that once you get out of your own self-pity and you say, you know, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm just going to do something for somebody else. You feel good. And whatever was 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 causing your day to be difficult or whatever was causing you to whatever you were going through, it, you, it almost was like it dwindled away. It didn't even matter anymore. That is a sign that lets us know the goodness of that feeling lets us know that's a part of what we're designed to do. We're designed to care for each other. We're designed to not just leave each other in the rubbish and, oh, okay, well, die by yourself or be, you know, whatever. Just turn our backs on. We're not designed that way. But because life can hurt and life causes calluses and causes us to get hardened and causes our hearts to get hardened, we forget about the human connection. We're all connected. That's why I just think racism and being prejudiced and everything is so stupid. Because when we get down to the root of who we really are on the inside, we're all connected and we all look the same. I, my blood's red. Your blood is red. My organs look like that way. Your organs look, you know what I'm saying? That's why you could take a heart from a man that passes away and says he's an organ donor. You could take his heart, a, a Caucasian man's heart, and put it in an African-American man's body and it'll, it'll work the same. Or you could take the lung of an African-American man and put it in an Asian man's body and it'll work the same. Do you know what I mean? But we, but we, but we, but we make life into this little mini, um, tiny thing. That's just all about us. That's it. This is my focus. How does that affect my bottom line? How, how is that going to affect me? Well, if I do that, that's going to put me out too much. Well, I don't know what people are going to say if I, if I, listen, my, <laughs> if I do that, how's that going to affect me if I, God gave you two eyes. 
Nothing is single. Do you know? So I just want to leave you with that. It's not life is just not about getting. It's about giving. It's about releasing. <laughs> you like my it's about duplication. It's about legacy. It's about what's coming after you. It's about getting out of our own selves and realizing life is so much bigger than me and I. And how am I going to look? If God has given, this is my challenge for you this week. If God has given you something to do, maybe it's an event, maybe it's an activity, maybe it's a book, maybe it's just something he wants you to share. My challenge to you this week is by the end of the week is to do something letting people know what you're doing. I don't care if it's a Facebook post. I don't care if it's a Facebook live. I don't care if it's just, I know Kim does jewelry. I don't care if it's just putting a picture up of your jewelry. I don't care what it is. It's so much bigger than me. Because if God is giving you something to do and you're not taking it seriously, you're being sloppy with it and you're worrying about other people, then you're not being responsible with the gift that he gave you. And nobody will ever know what you're doing if you don't let them know. And that's not being prideful. That's not bragging about yourself. That's simply being obedient to what God has said for you to do and getting into action and, and, and works and doing whatever and doing that thing that creates the activity right? That creates the activity to make whatever God told you to do. I don't want to say successful because that's not really what I'm, what I'm wanting to say, but for lack of a better word, I'll use successful. Do you know what I'm saying? No more false humility. It's not about bragging or, or thinking that you're better or, or you whatever. It's just being obedient. When you see me do things, I'm being obedient. That's it. I never wanted to speak. Ever. Never wanted to be in the forefront. Ever. But then God began to put a demand on me. And on my life. God began to give me dreams and people prophesying and, and speaking to me over and over and over and over again. God began to allow my life to slip because I was out of position. I had to deal with life issues because I was out of position. Because I was disobedient. Because I was running. Because it was about me. I didn't want to die to my flesh. I didn't want to be transparent, which I'm way transparent now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wanted life to be easy. I didn't want to have to deal with everything that comes with being a public person. I don't want that. Who wants to deal with that? Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining, Ezel. Nobody, really. But I realized in order for me to really begin to maximize the life that God had given me, I had to do what God told me to do with it. You know what I'm saying? I had to do what God told me to do. Because at the end of the day, let's just be real. Let's be real nuts and bolts right now. At the end of the day, it's God who breathed life into your nostrils. It's God that when you came through your mother's womb, he breathed life into you and told you to breathe and you did. Do you know what I'm saying? God is the creator of everything. And so if it is God who is the ultimate um, father and the creator and the one who gave me the breath I'm breathing right now. And if he snatched out of my lungs, I will collapse to the floor in a second. In him, we live and move and have our being. That's right. That's right, uh, Troy. So if that same God who, who, who spoke me into existence gave me something to do and he attached it to my life, Number one, I'm not even going to really be satisfied until I do it because it's my life's mission. But number two, how am I to reject a God that gave me the breath I'm breathing? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we forget that God, God can snatch it all if he wants to. Not that he will. I'm just saying he can. Do you know what I mean? So, let me see my last note. It gives, it gives, okay, so it gives life meaning when you... Oh, what did I say? When you are, I got horrible writing. What are you shining? Okay, so I talked about us being lights, and I asked you, what are you shining? What are you shining? What is the reflection coming from your countenance? You know, when Abraham, yeah, when Abraham, I'm trying to think. Sometimes I'm having different people in my head all the time, different Bible people, different scriptures. When Abraham um, came down from the mountain, the Bible said that his face shone. 
his face was shining bright. His light, he had been with the father so long that he had this, this shining light on his countenance. And I want you to understand that we all have an aura. There's something that when we step into a room, it precedes us. People can pick it up. People can tell you ever had somebody walk into a room. And all of a sudden, it just felt kind of icky. Or you felt like, ooh, you were a little afraid. Or you had somebody walk into a room, and you felt light, and you felt love, and you felt happy. Because we carry, we're carriers. We carry things. Right? So I ask you, what are you shining? When people look at you, what do they see? What's shining from your aura? What can people drink from your cup? You know, so I'm just, okay, I think I'm done, guys. I think I'm done. The Bible says we're earthen vessels. Yes. Find something you care about, living a life of meaning. I talked about that, not just getting by. We're, we need to stop just trying to get by. Just doing just enough. Just enough. Well, God, at least, yeah, at least the least you could have done, right? I want to challenge you. To maximize this thing that we're living. Every breath, every moment, every second. And that's, that can be hard sometimes. When you get in a habit of really living. I told my friend today. I said, you know what? I don't want to just live. I want to have life. I want to every day laugh. Which I do. do it often. I love to laugh. Even if I have a sad day, at some point that day, I'm going to laugh. Because I love, I, I just think, you know, the Bible says, uh, laughter does a hard good like medicine. Yes, you've been getting by for a long. Now it's time to turn it around. And it's never too late. And that's the beautiful thing. I talked about time yesterday. Sometimes we're so aware of time that we think we're running out of time to really enjoy life. And if you start now, there is no running out. You just maximize it. And stop living in regret in the past and, and what was and what wasn't and, and how this didn't go right. And stop living in the past. It's over. It's done. If, if, if God says that he would separate your sins as far from the east as from the west, then you separate yourself from it as well. Your mistakes, your sins, whatever you did, let it go. Because you can't pour new wine into old wineskin. What do I mean by that? For those of you not familiar with the Bible, you cannot pour a new you into old behaviors, into old habits into old thinking. It's time to rise up. It's time to awaken that thing on the inside of you. And it starts with actions. Break every chain, that's right. It starts with action steps. And the more, the more you get into momentum, the more you get moving, the more you get active, and the more you start seeing how God blesses that and God kisses that and you conquer these things, the more momentum you have, the more you do, and the more you do, the more success comes. Because here's the thing, you don't even have to be a believer to be successful, and that's just the truth. If you put enough actions and momentum to something, at some point, the, um, the I don't, what word am I looking for? The I would say inertia for lack of a better way of saying it. The, the momentum, I would just say momentum, the momentum of life, anything that is, is producing something, that is a seed that is producing and continuing to produce something, it creates, it creates something. It creates a harvest. So if you did something for 10 years the same way and maybe it didn't start out successful, at some point it's going to be successful. That's how you get singers who don't believe in God, but they become successful because they just put enough work behind their, their, what they're doing, their mission. And after creating enough work, they then become success. So I want you to understand it's really not that hard. Success is really not that hard. The hardest part is believing that you deserve it. Believe, and you deserve it because you were created for abundance, right? Believing that you deserve it and having the faith to even in the moments where it doesn't look like it's going to happen, to keep believing. I'm going to tell you this, I probably said this on all my periscopes lately, but I really want you to know I'm serious. There are things I know that God has not done in my life yet, and they're huge, that I know he's going to do it like I know my name. It's just, it's just a matter of when. And I'm looking every day. Every day I'm like, oh, that didn't happen yet? I'm surprised that didn't happen yet. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that's how, con the Bible says that, um, uh, this is my favorite guy, I always talk about him. I was fully persuaded, was it? Hmm. Yeah, Abraham. So then I didn't say the person right earlier. I was talking about Moses earlier when I was, I think. Y'all forgive me. My All these different Bible people in my head. But he says he was fully persuaded. They got, aw. I hate when my parent, my Facebook just cuts off. <laughs> I hate that. Um, 
that God, Abraham was fully persuaded that God was able to do what he promised he would do. And we have to be that way. We have to be fully, fully convinced, fully persuaded, fully charged, fully ready. So that when that phone call comes, we, we every time we answer the phone, we're thinking that it's the whatever the whatever that thing is we're believing for. We're like, oh wait, oh girl, I thought you was, you know, Bill Gates calling me to tell me you gave me five million dollars. <laughs> Thank you for joining Saving Big Time. You know, you get a phone call. Oh girl, I thought you was uh, Oprah Winfrey telling me that you got you got. I'm gonna have my own talk show. You know, get another phone call. Girl, quit playing. I thought you was Tyler Perry saying I get to be in his next movie. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, just for real. Whatever it is you're believing. Oh, girl, I thought you was, um, who's a big inventor? I don't know, some big inventor. I thought you was some big inventor saying my, my patent was approved and I was going to get $10 million for my patent. Do you know what I mean? Oh, girl, I thought this was New York Times call. I mean, we really have to be that way. And we have to be fully convinced because as you're fully convinced, your, your faith has is risen. And not only is it risen, it begins to pull into itself those good things, those good promises that we really want for our lives, that we're really believing for our lives. You know what I mean? So I am going to end there. Um, thank you all for joining. Thank you for the Amy Hearts. I hate that my Facebook, I think, I, I think it just died. I didn't have enough power on my on my iPad but oh are we cousins Tony let me see hmm okay well bye to you cousin <laughs> but uh thank you all for joining thank you for the amen hearts um yeah Tony is this is this my girl cousin Tony I have a girl co oh Tony hi yay yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? I didn't know that was you. Your face is covered up. Thank you for joining, babe. So I just wanted to leave that with you. Um, quick word of inspiration. Thank you for the amen hearts. Thank you for your time. I know time is so precious. I thank you for spending yours with me. I thank you for inviting your followers. I thank you for the amen hearts. And I'll say, like I always say, smile. It looks good on you and the world needs to see it. Until next time, I am Anisha Sharp, author, speaker, and minister. You guys enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and I will be back tomorrow. Bye-bye.